these are the people that help me and they can definitely help you guys too so please check them all out hey people i'm back today with a uh, review of the frozen sonic mini so i know people say my reviews tend to be really long so i'm going to break it down two minute quick review and there's a lot of close-up high-res photos at the end uh, and then after that two minute quick review i'm going to go in depth so that people who really want the information can get it so here's here's my quick hitter you want to get this printer if you run a print farm or you're printing minis as a merchant for one of the Patreons, you're printing very high volume uh, because it is super fast and it's really super accurate, detailed, crispy prints. Although it does have a bunch of downsides, I think for people who are printing a ton and very uptight about quality, the goods outweigh the bads. Okay, that's the quick hit. Now, if you want to find out why, just watch for a few minutes. So first we're going to start off with the things that I don't like, then we're going to move into the things that I absolutely hate, then the things that I like, and then the things that I love. Okay, so what don't I like about the printer? Well, it's got a plastic cover that you lift on and off. It doesn't, it's no hinge door or lid or anything like that. So that's a negative, but not a huge negative. I call it a mild pain in the butt. But look, you're getting a printer for $200, that's cost savings. I don't really mind that that much. Now let's get into the few things that I hate. Okay, what do I hate? The build plate, the top, okay, the bottom of the build plate is flat, obviously, right? The top of their build plate is flat. So instead of having slopes so that the resin drips off when the print is finished, it's flat. So that means if you finish a print, say you go to bed, you leave a print running, it finishes in the middle of the night. When you wake up in the morning, has the resin dripped off? No, the build plate is covered with resin, of course. So when you open up the machine, you have to hold your hand over it, you know, for like 10, 15 seconds minimum, I'd say, dripping resin, or you have to get a squeegee and squeegee it off. Real pain in the butt to me, really. I mean, I know it's cheaper to, to CNC a flat metal plate than, than have slopes on it, but come on, I mean, I'd rather pay an extra, I don't know what it would be, 10, 15 bucks, I'm making that up. But I'd rather pay extra to have a sloped, you know, top of the build plate. Uh, the plastic vat. So if you, after watching this review, go on Facebook or Reddit and look up the Frozen Sonic Mini or other reviews, what you'll see is people have a huge problem. This, this vat is plastic. So you've got a plastic vat holding liquid plastic that's trying to cure. It doesn't sound like a great recipe. And it turns out it's not. So many people have reported these vats cracking and breaking relatively soon after they got them. So plastic vat, cost-saving measure, but a really stupid one. I mean, theoretically, I do believe you could use a plastic vat, but then the quality level of that plastic would have to be so high, it might not even be cheaper than the metal, right? So plastic vat, terrible. Not just according to me, but according to basically everyone who has this thing. Other thing about the vat that's terrible. So this vat, my other vat, I have a Epax X1, the best of the best. I have a Photon. I have a Lotmax CH10. All of those vats would fit on this machine, except... If you look at the stock photo, their machine, the way you sit the vat on the machine, the machine has two screws going up like this, and the vat has holes in it. You, you thread the vat down over the screws. What does this mean? You can't use any other resin vat on this machine, even though they would fit. So their proprietary design of how to hold their vat in place is frustrating as hell, because I would just throw out their plastic vat and use, I have like five or six vats laying around. I would just use one of my other metal vats to solve the problem, but I can't. So I had to pay an extra 25 bucks and order a metal vat, which is on the way, uh, which is pretty frustrating. Because now the machine, I, I actually just factored that into the cost. The machine's not as cheap as it was before. So plastic vat, incredibly stupid. Non-sloped top to the print bed, incredibly stupid. Um, okay, so those, those, those are the things I hate about, those two things, but they're pretty big, okay? Those are pretty annoying things. But now let's talk about what's different on this from the current crop of machines we use. So the LCD screen is a monochromatic screen. It's lower resolution. And instead of 2K, I think it's a 1080p. So it's lower resolution for sure, and the manufacturer acknowledges that, but supposedly has better light transmission because, because of that, and also a longer screen life. So instead of replacing your LCD every month to three or four months, depending on how much you print, this screen supposedly can last you like a year. So that's an extra cost savings. If you factor in buying two or three screens a year at 40 bucks, 
That also makes this an extra $100 cheaper, 120 bucks cheaper than the other machines out there. So keep that in mind. So not only is the initial price point 200 bucks, add 25 for the VAT, 225, but you save 100, 120 bucks over the other machines. That, that brings the cost down to almost like $100 if you look at it that way. So it, it is something to think about. So also, even though it has a lower resolution, it's got a screen that transmits light better, which means you should get prints you'd think that were about as good. On top of that, they use a parallel uh, array for the LED lights underneath. So instead of the light coming from one spot and angling up, it's coming from a bed that's going straight up. That gives you better resolution or more accurate curing, which comes out effectively to better resolution along the outside edges of the plate. So you should theoretically get a more uniform print everywhere. Uh, on top of that, because the light transmission is so good, the cure times are fantastic. I mean, it sounds insane. I, my first test, which had some failures, I used a two second cure time for the normal layers. Two seconds. And the print almost came out perfect. Uh, one of my heavies did fail and, the, and, and that was attached to a foot and the foot came out a little flat. Then a couple of my lights failed, but overall the print came out pretty well. So I just bumped it up on my next print to 2.5 seconds. It's still ridiculously fast. That 2.5 second layer on my original Photon would have been a 12 second layer. On my Epax X1, it's a 7 second layer. And on my Lotmax CH10, it's also a 7 second layer. Now I'm down to 2.5 seconds. Bottom layer exposure, 20 seconds. I mean, just when I was typing those numbers in, I was... I knew it would kind of work, but I was kind of scared. I mean, those numbers are so low, it's so alien to me. So I ran my next text print, two and a half second normal exposure with 20 second on the bottom layer, which is just crazy. And print came out perfect. And what really, what really shocked me, now we're getting to the really good stuff, what really shocked me is that when I took the print out of my any cubic wash and cure station, which I still love, things great, but when I took it out of the IPA, I noticed right away, damn, this thing looked crisp and clean. So I'm expecting a print that's you know mildly worse to moderately worse than my Epax or my Lotmax or my Photon because it's got a screen with lower resolution, right? So I'm perfectly reasonable to expect that the print, especially when I look at it close, is going to be worse than when I'm getting off you know my Epax X1, which is the best printer I have. So imagine my surprise when looking at it in my hand, it looks so crisp and clean. And then I get out my four times magnifier, which I use for painting. I get out my four times magnifier before I even cure it. And I, I look at it under four times magnifier. I'm like, holy crap, this is super clean and crisp. Like it already looks to me without comparing like my best print ever. So now I'm a little bit shocked. So I run and I get the same model that I've printed on both my lot max and my, uh, and my EPAX, and I get the exact same model. I put them all together. I'm looking under four times resolution. So I'm, I'm like almost looking under a microscope. And yeah, you'll see in the pictures, it, it came out better. So now I'm like dumbfounded. This thing printed, you know, three or four times as fast as my Photon, over two times as fast as my EPAX or LotMax, and with lower resolution, and a printer that I thought I was going to absolutely hate from opening it and seeing the build plate and the plastic vat and all the other crap. And knowing it was lower resolution, I thought, so now all that bad stuff and it's not going to print as well. What's the point of this stupid thing? And then I'm looking at the print and I'm like, the print's better. And in a lot less time. So now I'm like feeling a little confused. I know it can't be luck, right? But that, that wouldn't happen with printer luck. So I rushed to get my next print on there so I could compare again. So then I, I, I did another dwarf um, that had a lot of detail, you know, and I also wanted to do a smaller figure because you're going to test a machine. You don't want to test it by printing something big. Everything looks good printed big, right? Print something small. So I print another dwarf, same results, which you'll see in the pictures coming up in a few minutes. The dwarf printed out better on this frozen Sonic Mini than on my Epax or my Lot Max, which are both excellent printers. So I'm, my, my jaw's like, like, I'm in shock, totally not expecting this. I was getting ready to just do a, a review of saying this machine's crap and you pay $200, you get crap for $200. Now I'm really confused because it prints way faster. The LCD screen supposedly lasts a full year basically and it's printing better. Weird. 
So I quickly run off uh, the Orc Beauty from Artisan Guild. And the reason I chose this model is I printed eight or nine times before on all three of my other printers. And when I print it normal size, again, print it big, doesn't matter, I get great, great perfect detail. But when I print it small, I can see two fangs coming up from her bottom lip. I could never clearly see the fangs, and I could never clearly see her eyelids. There's eyelids sculpted on there, but of course they're super tiny. So I, I, that just stuck out in my head as a model that never printed exactly where I wanted to, and I thought that's just the technology. So I print that Orc Beauty out, and you see in the pictures here, you can see her eyelids, and you can see each fang very clearly. So now, and now I'm amazed. This printer is definitely 100% printing a little better and clearer than my other printers. So now I don't know what to say in the review because it's got a few things that are terrible, but then it's got a couple of things that are amazing and it's really cheap. I would tend to say this. I really believe that if you're running like some kind of print farm or if you're a merchant for Patreon, like if you're printing 24 seven and you have to pump out a lot of figures. Well, A, and I can't talk about durability. Obviously I've only had it for two days, but let's talk about what I can talk about. It, Prints way faster. So if you're trying to output a lot of models, like I know for the average person, you probably don't have enough time to print out all the models you have anyway between you know, supporting them and all that stuff. Um, so you might you say it prints twice as fast. I don't care because I can't print that many models anyway. So maybe for the average hobbyist, let's put that aside. But for everyone else who's printing volume, the speed boost is incredible. Even if it printed the exact same as the other ones, the speed boost is very helpful, obviously. Given that you have a speed boost and it prints more detail, clearer detail, well, if you're a merchant or running a print farm for whatever, then obviously this makes sense to get because you get better prints faster, no brainer, and, and, and at the price. And if you print 24 seven, you're gonna burn out your LCD and screens pretty quickly. This one burns out a lot slower. So to me, no brainer for you guys, you should be going out and buy this. Now, if you talk to the average hobbyist, let's say only prints one or two days a week, they don't have time to slice up all the models and whatever. And if you go to a pre-supported tiered artisan guild, you can get all their models pre-supported by me, make your printing easier. But uh, shameless plug. But if you're a casual hobbyist, to be honest, the quality of life downsides may not outweigh those upsides for you. But let me jump back to one other thing. Some hobbyists are like me. You're just super obsessed about the details. Even I'm not a great enough painter to pick up all the details maybe. I still, when I print, you know, I want it to come out as good as possible. Like some people are okay with the supporting up here or a hole there, this, that. I tend not to be. So when I see this gives me better prints than my other printers, it makes me want to use it. Like I said, even though my painting skill is not good enough to take advantage of it. So for any serious painters out there who 3D printing, you might want to consider this reading it gives you better prints, makes gives you something better to paint. So for the average hobbyist, I'm not sure. You know, it's just a personal, you know, look at the, the things I said were good about, the things I said were bad, and just make your own decision. If you're an entry-level printer, I mean, the ease of use isn't actually bad for entry-level, and the price point, obviously, is easy to get in on. I still recommend for anyone, especially if you're not going to print 24-7, EPAX X1 is still, you know, the best of the best under $500. But this becomes a viable alternative if you, if you don't want to spend that kind of money you know, I mean, the flat build plate, which I hate, you know, like I said, it's an extra 10 or 15 seconds of work to get the extra resin off it. So it's annoying, but I guess it's not the end of the world. Plastic vat is terrible. Yeah, I do think you have to pay them the extra to get the metal vat, which rumor is they're going to replace it soon with the metal vat for everyone. So if, that's, if that turns out to be true, you might want to wait and just buy it with the metal vat if that's the case. But I'm really mixed on this. I really wanted to hate this machine, to be honest, and thought I was going to hate it totally. And, and then I see these gorgeous prints, and it's hard to hate something that's giving you prints like this, especially in, you know, I print the, you know, some of these figures for like less than two hours. It was taking four, four and a half hours before. So anyway, that's enough of me talking about it. I think I covered everything good and bad about it. Um, I'll have a link to Amazon if you guys want to buy it. Like I said, for a lot of people, I do think it's the right choice. Uh, if, if you can use that link, you will help my channel a little bit. doesn't cost you extra, but does support what I'm doing. And what I use that money for, by the way, I use that money, like I bought this printer, they didn't send it to me, I bought it with my own money. So people, if they buy through my links, that gives me a little more money to spend on my hobby, and then I'll go out and buy more printers and test them for you. And for me, I'm buying it with my own money. You're going to get an honest review, right, that you can trust. So please support the channel. 
Um, anyway, let's look at the close-up side-by-side photos, and I'm going to talk you through them and give you different points to look at. But I think it'll be pretty clear to you uh, the print quality that I'm talking about. I think you'll notice it pretty quickly in these in these photos coming up. So stay tuned for the pictures. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, please subscribe, and I will see you again soon. So here we look at the first print, and the one on the left is the one from the Sonic Mini, the one on the right is from the Epax. The Epax one came out great, but look at the one on the left. Look at the detail, like her belt buckle. Look at her eyes, you know, her eyebrows, her eyelids. Uh, look at the boots, uh, the straps by the belt. The, I mean, just the detail is incredible. I, I was really in shock. This is the first print. This is the one when I looked at and compared. I was just in shock. And then the uh, next one coming up, what I did was I ran the same print, but I ran it with the anti-aliasing. This comes with anti-aliasing built in. I ran the anti-aliasing up to uh, eight times, and that's the one in the middle. I didn't bother to put weapons on her yet. Uh, I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't really tell any difference between that one and the one on the right, which is, again, from the Frozen Sonic Mini. But again, looking at, looking at the detail on both those prints off the Frozen Sonic Mini, I mean, to me, it's both outstanding just I mean you know like I said my best prints ever I think off this off this crappy little machine basically so pretty pretty mind-blowing to pull print after print like this off off the machine you know and then the next one coming up uh, will be the other dwarf that I spoke of and you can see from this one too it's just you know it's the exact same model uh, and Except that I, the, the one on the left has the pipe. That's the pipe version. I accidentally used the, the wrong version. But it's the same model. And you can see, again, look at, look at his beard braid. Uh, look at his belt buckle. Look at the uh, front of the boots. Look at the little spike on the, you know, right below his kneecap on the boots. Look at his nose and his eyes. You know, it's just crisper, cleaner, and a little more detail. I, I don't know what else to say about it. It, it just printed out, you know, amazing. And like I said, this this was a totally totally shocking uh, outcome for me. I was I was totally expecting with that lower resolution, I'd get you know worse prints. I was in no way expecting to get great prints out of it. Now the last thing to me, you know, really was the was the I don't want to say nail in the coffin because that sounds bad, but this, this put me over the top in terms of what I think of how this thing prints because this Org Beauty, like I said in the main video, see those fangs coming out of her bottom lip? You can very clearly see them here. I, on none of the other prints that I've done on any of my other three machines could I ever see those fangs. They always kind of just blended in with the mouth. And the little part of her eyelids above and below the actual eyeball, I couldn't see those before. Now I see them quite clearly. So, you know, look at her toes. Look, I mean, let's look at the look how clean this whole print is. I mean, this really, you know, this really sold me on the print quality of this machine. So that's it. So hope you guys, uh, this gives you some food for thought. Again, thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Uh, please check out my other videos. Thanks, everybody.